The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. And now we join Frank Race for the adventure of the General's Lady. There's nothing quite as bad as the liquor you get in the Mediterranean area. And the Bar Talibri in Tunis is no exception. But it has an atmosphere you'll find nowhere else. And I sensed a dawning appreciation of this in the attitude of Mark Donovan as he stood beside me drinking imitation scotch. <laughs> It's a great town, Race. I like it. You didn't think you would, you remember? Yes, I was wrong. When you said Africa, all I could think of was a lot of elephants snorting through the jungle. <laughs> this place is class. And dames, dames, dames. <laughs> Where'll I get back to New York and tell the boys about these dames? Mm. <laughs> Guy couldn't do no better in front of Minsky's boy last did it. Pardon me. Didn't I hear the name Race mentioned? Yes, I'm Race. You're my boy. I've been looking for you. I had noticed him before, standing at the end of the bar. He was tall and broad and red-headed, with a grin that would have elected him to public office. Heard a lot about you, Race. Guess that's why I was looking for someone who'd be throwing his weight around. You're a lot quieter than your reputation. I'm Ted Connolly. Oh, it's a pleasure. This is Mark Donovan. Hi, Mark. Hi. How'd you happen to hear about me? Pete Peterson. Pete? He's going to meet me here. I know. That's why I've been looking for you. Pete couldn't make it. Knowing Pete, I'd say that means trouble. What's the story? He's been hurt, badly hurt. We're going to see him. You want to come with me? We'll come. Lead the way. Pete Peterson, the international troubleshooter for one of the biggest insurance outfits in the business. When you thought of Pete, you usually thought of drive and vitality. But the drive was out of him now, and he had about as much vitality as a wet sack. Pete Peterson had become a limp heap on a bed of pain. Race, glad you got here. What goes, Pete? What happened to your face? My face? Yeah. Got to take some surgery to make it look decent again. Who did it, Pete? I could tell you the name of one of them. The part. Sounds like a Marseille duck rat. Yeah. Wears a big ring on his right hand. A knuckle duster. Hmm. I know all about that ring. Believe me, I know all about it. Why, Pete? Why are you here? Because of a guy named Lemitran. Know him? General Lemitran. Yeah, I know him. Well, he's in Tunis because of a woman. The company got the tip that he was never going to leave the city alive. Hmm. If Lemitran's murdered, it could mean civil war in Lenaco. So... So you came to play nursemaid? And look how I ended up. Have you seen Lemitran? Uh, never had a chance to get near him. I'm going to have to turn it over to you, Race. And the only lead I can give is the name of a woman. Joan Venere. Well, you can give me one other lead, Pete. Where did you encounter this Lapard? In a dive called the Eleanor. But, Race. Yeah, Pete? If you find him, watch it. I know a few things about taking care of myself. But man to man, he handled me like a child. Whatever you do... Don't let him get his hands on you. The Earl and R. A low ceiling, a low cobweb line, and judging the two arguments that flared as soon as we got there, a low boiling point. Mark and I stuck around, drinking once in a while to avoid being conspicuous. Then, after about 45 minutes, my attention was drawn to a hand resting on the bar beside me. It was a monstrous hand, hairy and thick. The fact about it that held my gaze was a massive ring that encircled the third finger. You seem to be curious about me, my friend. I am curious about that ring. You have a reason, perhaps? I've been told that a man by the name of Lepard wears such an ornament. So? Well, you can talk to me about that. I am Marcel Lepard. What else did you hear? 
But you wear the ring as a weapon. And uh, that annoys you, we. Oui? I'm annoyed when I think of the man you disfigured within me. <laughs> there have been so many men who have tested my little trinket. Well, this man's name is Peterson, a friend of mine. Ah, a friend. So uh, you would do something about it, huh? Yes. I thought of doing this. <laughs> So, you would have smashed my hand, huh? If I had left it there. <laughs> what did you take me for, an idiot? But now, my friend, it is my turn. He didn't hurry. Just crouched a little. A squat, thick-bodied man of tremendous strength. I set myself and he came in. I was sure of one thing as I got my knees under me there on the floor. His lapard was no lily pad to be plucked lightly. I watched him warily as he came erect across the room from me. Then I became conscious of something else. He had friends. The proof of that was presented in the form of a heel that gouged into the calf of my leg. Brace! I'm blowing the lights! Let's get out of here! <laughs> well, I... I think we're clear now. Yes, sir. Oh. Good thing. I couldn't go another 50 oh. feet. Oh, thanks, Mark. Oh. Well, the diversion oh. created back there. No, brother. Yeah, I was in a spot. Oh, you know you were in a spot. That guy had more pals than all of them in the pool room. Yeah. Look, tell me something, will you? Hmm. <coughs> Since when you started going around picking brawls? Well, you oh. saw what Lepard did to Pete Peterson. Oh. That was enough to raise any man's blood pressure. Well, look, any time you tangle with that Lepard, you ain't attending old tea party. Oh. What do we do now? Well, it's pretty late. We better go back to the hotel, turn in. Oh, no. You don't think you're being subtle, do you? <laughs> Anytime you come out with a suggestion like that, there's only one answer, chump. You're gonna go see a dame. That's right, Marcus. A dame by the name of Joan Venner. Yeah. Well, take it easy. And try and stay out of trouble, will you? I begin to get the feeling this town is full of it. Joan Venner. I expected a brunette. A tall, statuesque brunette. Maybe about 35 with a lot of schmaltz. Instead, her door was answered by a combination of flaxen hair and blue eyes. Not at all statuesque, but uh, with a figure that'd top any cigarette girl you've ever seen. What is it you want? I, um, uh, I know it's late, but uh, I understand we have mutual friends. Thought you might like to chat about them. Oh? And just who are these? Mutual friends. Uh, General Lemitron and the general's most able aide, Selvon Sebastian. I see. And who are you? The name is Race, Frank Race. I am here because I'm worried about the general. Mm. Perhaps you had better come in, huh? Thank you. Do you uh, mind if I say I'm surprised? Concerning what? Well, you were described to me as a lady of intrigue. I expected someone well... Shall we say, um... I'm sure you mean to be complimentary. Oh, I do mean it. Believe me, I do. I want to sit down, right? Would you care for a drink? Well, no, thanks. I'm quite content with the atmosphere as it is. But there's uh, something that puzzles me. Yes? Why the tie-up with Lemaitre? He's big, but he's not that big. And you... Well, you could have anything you set your mind on. You could... No, you're not being complimentary at all, are you? You know, it almost make me believe those words. Don't make yourself try too hard, Ace. Now, what is it you came to see me about? Let me drown here in Tunis because of you. If he stays, he's in danger of losing his life. Ace, you must know something clearly. I'm not in love with General Lemitron. I never have been. Nor have I ever given him any encouragement. If he is here because of me, I cannot help it. Well, I can understand all you've said. I can believe it. Sometimes a man goes a little out of his head over a woman, even though she doesn't feel the same way about him. Would you be willing to leave Tunis so that he'll go to? What? Tunis is my home. Well, if you did it just for a short time, we could go to Paris, do some shopping. Is this really so important, Ray? So it's just a whim of someone. An American insurance company has learned that General Dimitri wants to be assassinated here in Tunis. If possible, we'd like to prevent that happening. That's why I'm here. <sighs> All right, Ace. I'll go to Paris. 
But I won't enjoy it. I won't enjoy it either. Much rather have you here in Tunis. Will I see you again? Would you like to? I think so. Yeah. Let's see if this will help you make up your mind. When I... When will I see you again? Don't worry. I'll never keep you waiting very long. Outside, for all the lateness of the hour, the night was full of sound. Murmuring people patronizing sidewalk cafes. You could hear them, but you could hardly see them. Tunis is like that after dark. There are a few lights, and it has the atmosphere of a darkened stage. Stage set for drama and suspense. And as I walked, a, a voice reached for me from the shadows. Grace, one moment. Perhaps you don't remember me. Salvan Sebastian? Of course I remember you. And as a matter of fact, I'm glad to see you. At the risk of seeming impertinent, I must ask what you are doing at the apartment of Mademoiselle Bernier. <laughs> How was the watchdog, Auntie Sebastian? I was discussing General Lemitron. And yourself. Uh, Lemitron. A great man. A genius. At the moment, he suffers from temporary insanity because of a woman. Yeah, give him credit, Sebastian. He's a woman well worth it. No woman is worth a man's life. Do you know who's after the Mitterrand race? Bargon himself. The general has become too strong. The party has become too strong. At home, I would not worry. There we can protect Limitron. But here... Yeah, maybe it'll work out. I've just persuaded the girl to go to Paris. Paris? <laughs> what good will that do, race? Limitron will follow her. No. We'll have to get him home. Oh. Would the girl go to an Olonaco? Well, you'll have to ask her. I won't. And I doubt it. She says she's never given Lemaitre any encouragement at all. I know, I know. That seems so hopeless. Uh, Reis, why don't you come with me to our villa? You know Lemaitre, and he may respect your advice. Hmm? You can at least talk to him. Good. Let us go at once. <laughs> a short walk, not more than five minutes, and I stirred up my thinking to plan what I'd say to the general. But in front of the villa, I found myself with other problems in the shape of several shadowy figures that suddenly confronted us. You are going somewhere, Ace? Le Pard. Oui, Le Pard. Would you mind getting out of my way? You are forgetting something, Ace. We have some unfinished business. Later, Le Pard. At the moment, I have other matters to take care of. Now, Monsieur Ace. In this time, you will not run for me. I spun as I came in, ramming a heel into his knee. And he fell away, but then his companions came at us, <coughs> making a wild spinning affair with Lepard and I again finding one another in the dark. This time, you will not get away. This time, I am going to kill you. He had his hands about my throat, and they were like bolt cutters. But I slammed a punch to his stomach, and another, and he let go. But then as he came in again, I drilled through his jaw. You all right, Sebastian? Yes. Those war threats. I should have had this gun out sooner. What about your men? I'd say he's in a thorough state of coma. Then everything is satisfactory. Maybe. Let's get inside. I have a feeling we better check with the general. <laughs> Sebastian nodded, and we went into the villa. We had no trouble finding General Lemitron. He was in the living room, but in no condition to receive a visitor. The general lay face down on the carpet, a sprawled, grotesque figure. The general had been stabbed to death. We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race... And now, back to the adventures of Frank Race. From the look of it, the general had been stabbed just as he came into the room. His hat, a soft Panama, lay a few feet from his head. An incongruous note was an electric razor that had been placed on the phone stand. I glanced at Sebastian. He stood immobile, staring down at his dead chief. He stood this way for a long time before he said anything. 
And when he spoke, he still kept his gaze on the quiet form lying at his feet. So, they have done it. And all the time I've been afraid. I never really thought they would. But let me mix you a drink, Sebastian. You will never know, Race, how much I worship this man. Well, some of this brandy should help. They murdered him because he'd become too popular with the people. He would have been our next president at the next election. Do you realize that, Race? It was a foregone conclusion. Yeah, here, Sebastian. Take this drink. You drink it, Race. The fire I need is already beginning to burn inside me. What are you going to do? I'm going home. Set the country on fire, huh? Eh? What do you expect? You think I'm going to let them get away with this? You said you've got an election coming up. Why don't you let the people return the verdict? Through their ballots. No. We will set it as now, when I take back Limitron's body. Yes. That'll do it, won't it? All you'd need to do would be to utter a crime. Avenge Lemitrin. And the country's in for a bloody civil war. But nobody will be surprised, will they, Sebastian? You people have always done it that way, haven't you? An eye for an eye. Yes, they have always done it that way. An eye for an eye. And that girl... Now, wait a minute. You have no proof that Joan Venera had anything to do with this. I don't need proof. She was the cause of his being here. That is enough. I've got a warning for you, Sebastian. That girl must not be harmed. Yes. I take care of the woman for you, General. Then we go home. He was standing there like a man in a trance. And I knew that nothing could be done with him. So I turned from him, left the villa, returned to the center of the city. Reis, what is it? I must come in and talk to you. At this hour? Oh, Reis, you're insane. No, I'm not insane, but Sebastian is. General lemitrin has been murdered, and Sebastian is blaming you. Blaming me? All right, Reis, you may come in. Her hair was tousled from slumber, and her eyes were sleepy. She looked cuter than that chicken and Easter basket. So I took her in my arms, but only for a minute. This was a girl in danger. What is it about Sebastian Reis? He's always been a fanatic about Lemitrin. Now he's gone mad. But can you not realize that you I... You can't get that through to him now. I tried. He's in a fog, a fog of bitterness and hate. So I'm going to get you away from here. You're going to the Hotel Majestic. I was able to get a room for her next to the one Mark and I had. It was three o'clock by then. But when I tried to turn in, I found myself too restless to sleep. So I awakened Mark. Uh, uh, now... Yeah, yeah, what goes? That girl I went to see when I left you. She's in the next room. She might be in danger, so I want you to watch out for her. Yeah. I don't think anything's going to happen, but stay alert anyway, will you? Yeah, sure. Where are you going? I don't know. I can't settle down. I thought I'd go out for half an hour. I'll be down at the bar at the Libre. Okay, okay. That one for me while you're at it. Ted Conley, his red hair a little on end from having a good time. With him was another American, a lad he introduced as Larry Charles. I sure am glad to meet you, Race. We need a little company around here. <laughs> Place has been dying on its feet. You're celebrating something? I sure am. I'm celebrating the fact I'm about to become a BTO. BTO? <laughs> yeah, big time operator. Oh. <laughs> He's dreaming big dreams, Race. That liquor does that to Larry every time. Ah, listen, boy, I'm a cinch. I'm a cinch, I tell you. <laughs> hey, what do you have, Race? Hey, don't try none of this phony scotch. It'll cut your throat. Yeah, uh, I'll have a fina low. Huh? Uh, brandy and soda. Oh, yeah. Hey, give the man a fina... Uh, fina <laughs> hey, give the man a brandy and soda. <laughs> listen, Race, let me tell you about me. <laughs> you know what I do for a living? I sell nitrates. Hey, that's a fancy name for fertilizer. Mm. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I sell nitrates all over Europe. Uh, oh, here's your Fina, uh, Fina, oh, yeah, uh, uh, brandy and soda. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I sell nitrates, but I got a competitor, a nice fella, but a competitor. <laughs> yeah, three or four months ago, he beat me out on a big order. Millions of sacks of this stuff. I was feeling pretty bad. Yeah, uh, toss that down, Rates. Have another one. No, oh, thanks. I'll You know what one. happened? Big country to the north all of a sudden wants a lot of nitrates. More than anybody can supply. Yeah, which sends the price way, way up. <laughs> and here's my competitor all contracted up to deliver every bit he's got to Lanaco. <laughs> but me, I ain't signed up to deliver nothing, you see. 
so I can deal with the big country up north at those very pretty prices. No, <laughs> well, I drink to your success. <laughs> ah, thanks, Ray. Thanks a lot. Hey, you're drinking to a big operator, you know that? A big operator. <laughs> Ain't it a shame, you know, they don't have any bourbon around here? What I wouldn't do for a good glass of... <laughs> bartender, another thing, uh, brandy and soda for Mr. Race. <laughs> Yeah, but you gotta listen to some more, Race. You ain't heard the funniest part of it. Race! You see, I... Race, Race, we got I, this competitor. Uh, partners, Larry, what is it, Mark? Look, Joe? look, look. Yeah, yeah, she's gone. I was lying awake, like you said, but I must have dropped off, and I heard something. I went out in the hall, but I was too late. The door was open, she was gone. Trouble, Race? Plenty of trouble. Lovely girl in jam, through no fault of her own. Well, let's get her out of it. Yeah, we'll help when we take. Of course. Well, that makes four of us, Race. We ought to be able to do something about it. We could find her. No, I've got an idea where she might be. Come on. <laughs> I guess it was Lamitron's villa. And that's where we found her. Guarded by a couple of waterfront renegades. Well, did they, uh... Did we take them ourselves or do I go out and get the other guys, huh? Yeah, we're here. We'll take them ourselves. Right. You get the one in the chair. I'll take the lantern of the cigarette. Let's go. Hey! I got mine! And I'll get oh! mine! Oh. oh, brother. Nothing to it. I'm getting so I don't even need an end wrench. Nice. I had a feeling you'd come. Oh, Joan, I hope you're all right. If you just untie my hands. Hey, a fine thing. You said you were just coming in to reconnoiter. Yeah, why don't you let me and Ted in on the phone? Well, I'm sorry, Larry. It seems simpler to do it this way. Oh. What oh. makes you think it's all simple, Ray? It was Sebastian, standing in the doorway. And I knew what he meant. He had the glare of a fanatic in his eyes. He gripped a submachine gun in his hands. Let me repeat my question. What makes you think it's so simple? I see I was wrong. And the men cannot afford to be wrong when he meddles in affairs that don't concern him. Can he raise? Sebastian, we've known each other for years. Be logical about this girl. She was one of the causes of Limitron's death. There were other causes, but she was one. So she is going to die. Is it a you wish to die with her race? His mood was hair trigger. The look in his finger was going to flame that tommy gun into action. My sense that its bullets wouldn't stop with Joan Van Nair. I stood there, frozen, without a thought. And then, just a part of my glance took in the electric razor I'd seen before, the incongruous note. It was still on the phone stand, and it started gears meshing in my brain. I spoke to him again. Sebastian, this girl didn't have anything to do with Lamitron's death, and neither did any of your countrymen. Now you're talking just to divert me. No, I'm not. The answer, Sebastian, is nitrates. Nitrates? Your country contracted for heavy shipments of the stuff a few months ago, you remember? Which means nothing to me. It means everything. Since then, the price for nitrates has gone up tremendously. If the contract with your government could be broken, the seller stands to profit considerably by the increase in price. But it's hard to break a contract with a nation, isn't it, Sebastian? A civil war would do it, though, wouldn't it? Then the seller could refuse delivery. Do you see, Sebastian? I see no proof. I see no killer. You can turn your eyes on the proof. That electric razor on the phone stand. I'll gamble that there's your proof. Here, let me show you. Hold it, Race. This is a trick. No, it's no trick. General Lemaitre was a soldier, an engineer. An engineer is an orderly person. What would his razor be doing in this room unless someone else moved it here? Lemaitre couldn't have been using it. He'd just come in when he was murdered. A lot of wealth, Race. No, no, I've got it. I know it. The killer waited here for the general, waited a long time. He wanted about... I had to pick up the razor in the bathroom and started to shave himself. But the general's arrival startled him. And he kept the razor in his hand when he came in here. Well, look, even the cord's still attached to it. I'm going to pick it up, Sebastian. I'm going to give you further proof. All right. Pick it up. But any tricks and I turn this gun loose. Now, Larry, you were saying plenty about nitrates this evening, remember? Well, yeah, Race, I remember. What's that? That uh, competitor you mentioned, you were talking about Ted Conley, weren't you? Yeah, I was, but... Wait you... a second, Race. You can't pin this on me. I think I can, Connolly. I think I can. Here's your proof, Sebastian. Proof that Ted Connolly was in this room today. The hairs inside this cutting mechanism. Some of them are gray, but the others indicate this razor has been used by a red-headed man. Hey, Connolly's gone. Leave that to me. I'll get him. Oh, race, if I ever live through this night. Oh, but you've got to live through it, baby. I've got plans for a lot of other nights. And all of them include you. The 
Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Lillian Baev, Wilms Herbert, Jack Crucian, and Harry Lang. This series is written and directed by Buckley Angel and Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production.